Welcome everyone to this session on rapid revision of surgery part 7. My name is Dr. Janvi. I am the anesthesia educator on an academy and uh, all of you all who are here already know that we have been doing this session of surgery revision since uh, this month. So this is our seventh part. We have finished esophagus, stomach, small intestine, uh, appendix, intestinal obstruction, swellings in surgery and head, face and neck already. And today we are going to be doing breast, uh, parathyroids and salivary glands. So welcome to today's class. Uh, first of all, I hope you guys are able to see me and hear me well. Please leave a thumbs up in the chat box if the streaming is okay. And we can go ahead with the class. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Kamagani Chole Bature. Alright, I can see that you guys are able to see me and hear me well. So, let's begin with our class for today. Uh, this is the Telegram channel. Uh, let's crack Neat PG where you guys will be able to answer. Uh, sorry, one second. Huh? Yeah. So, this is the Let's Crack Neat PG Telegram channel where we post the links to all our classes. And for you guys, since we have already completed stomach and GIT, I have curated a test on the Unacademy app. It is absolutely freely available for all of y'all. It's just a, a test which has about 10 questions in it and you should not take more than 10 minutes to solve it. So this is the code for the test 619516 so you go on the unacademy app put the code in the test uh, option and you can begin the test and before beginning the test you need to use a code to enter into the test so you can use my code dr janvi life all right okay so these are our fmg toppers and this sunday we have the unacademy combat and i'm proud to say we also have anesthesia as one of the subjects in the unacademy combat so i will be taking a special class uh, on this weekend mostly on saturday where we will be revising the important concepts of anesthesia maybe i'll be giving you a little bit of a hint as to what can come in anesthesia for the combat because you have big prizes to be won almost up to 10 lakh rupees and our special classes have all these options of polls for the learners never miss a class option lecture notes pdf at the end of it we have a highly effective question bank which has 25,000 plus high yield questions we have raise a hand option in our classes in which you can speak to the educator live during the class and clear your doubts and these are the batches that are going on right now the target need pg 2022 mcq discussion batch focus fmg 2022 comprehensive batch and the target next integrated system wise batch 2023 and i will be starting off with the plus classes of anesthesia today evening from 4 to 6 pm every day for six days we will complete the entire portion of anesthesia and this is our free test calendar that is available there you have subject wise tests as well as tests of uh, integrated subjects that are available for free and <clears throat> this is our neat pg subscription um plan you can see the pricing plan for three months it is just 11,250 and for six months it is 20,250 you can even try a one month subscription and see if you like an academy or not and when you buy the subscription please don't forget to use my code dr janvi life which will give you an extra 10 percent off on your subscription value all right so let's begin with our class for today. So this is the first picture that I want you guys to tell me about. So this is a young mother and she is coming with fever and a painful breast lump. She is a new young mother. She is lactating and she is coming with a fever and painful breast lump. So identify what exactly is this is she suffering from. Good morning all of you all. Jaldi jaldi join karlo. Yes, very good. Chole Bhature. In fact, Chole Bhature in his picture also has Chole Bhature. That's very interesting. That's making me hungry now. Okay. Yes, absolutely correct. So, this is nothing but a breast abscess. Okay. How will you identify this during your exam? Very easy. Just remember anything that they give you uh, in a young lactating mother when they use the word lactating bas tumko aag band karke sirf directly answer mark kar dena hai as breast abscess okay so tell me here i told you that the patient has a lump suppose if they say that there is no lump there is only red redness of the entire breast there is no lump then what will your diagnosis be in that case 
no lump only redness okay so when the pus is forming and there is formation of a lump you call it as a breast abscess but when there is no lump there is only redness you call it as mastitis okay so please remember these are two different diagnoses so when you read the question in the exam make sure that you mark the correct answer okay you see whether the lump is present or not if lump is present then mark it as breast abscess if lump is absent mark it as mastitis all right yeah absolutely correct so now what will be your treatment be for this patient they will ask you what is the treatment for this patient so will you start her on oral antibiotics or iv antibiotics that is the next question for you guys oral or iv antibiotics yes surgical uh, treatment will obviously be incision and drainage okay now remember your breast abscess is almost like an acute emergency okay if you have to start on something for breast abscess you will admit the patient in the hospital and start her on iv antibiotics okay but your mastitis can settle on its own within 3 to 5 days so in mastitis you will start the patient on oral antibiotics okay so mastitis is less severe start on oral and your breast abscess is more severe so start on iv antibiotics okay so the other thing you can do in case of breast abscess is also aspiration of the pus okay only when both of these things are not working only when aspiration and iv antibiotics are not working you will go for the next thing that is incision and drainage okay so the indication for incision and drainage in a breast abscess will be if the abscess continues to persist despite iv antibiotics and aspiration and the second the indication is if you have a recurrent breast abscess okay so you have already aspirated you have started on iv antibiotics it has resolved after a few months you see again the mother is having a recurrent breast abscess so in that case do a proper ind okay all right now next question that they ask in the exam what is the most common cause of breast abscess or mastitis what is the organism most commonly involved in breast abscess or mastitis okay pairs just staph is not enough tell me the exact organism so it is staph aureus okay staph aureus all right so these are all the questions that they ask about breast abscess and mastitis that you should be able to answer in your exam okay moving on to our next question yeah so rose ambulance ki awaaz aati hai it just reminds you ki sabko kaam pe jana hai theek hai all right so moving on to our next question so this is a patient who is coming to you she says that doctor i am concerned because i get discharge from the nipple initially it was whitish discharge i was not very worried about it but now i am getting a greenish colored discharge from the nipple greenish discharge from the nipple okay now you ask her about her history so she everything is fine she has no comorbidities you ask her about her social history so she says that she is a smoker okay you ask her about any clinical symptoms that she is getting along with the discharge so she says that she is getting itching around the nipple itching around the nipple is present so now tell me what is this patient suffering from very good absolutely correct all of you all so she is suffering from nothing but duct ectasia okay duct ectasia all right so how will you identify duct ectasia this is one of the most important features the greenish discharge from the nipple that will help you identify it the second thing the fact that she is a smoker it will help you identify the uh, will be the ne next identifying in lesion now tell me what is the treatment for duct ectasia what will your treatment be what is the surgical treatment of duct ectasia anything you will do will you remove the duct if you remove the duct what is it called if you remove the only the involved duct 
Pule, we have just finished breast abscess mastitis. Now we are doing ductic tissue. Okay. Yes, very good, Chole Bature. So if you are removing a single duct, then this is called as microdochectomy. Microdochectomy. Okay. All right. The, another thing yeah, that you can do if you want to remove multiple duct, you can take a cone-shaped incision. Cone-shaped incision. So that is called as Hadfield cone incision. Okay, Hadfield cold incision. Okay. Okay. So this is how you diagnose ductectation. And this is how you treat ductectation. Now, just like you have greenish discharge from the nipple, you also have other colored discharges from the nipple. So you have to tell me if the patient comes with a bloody discharge from the nipple, then what is your diagnosis? And the second one is if there is a serious discharge from the nipple, then what is your diagnosis? Okay, very good, Fez. So, if there is a bloody discharge from the nipple, that means the patient is suffering from malignancy. So, it will be a papilloma or a CA breast. Okay, and serious discharge, anyone? Serious discharge of nipple is seen in which disease? किसी को पता है नहीं पता नहीं पता है तो बताओ I will tell you the answer then okay so serious discharge is seen in Andy can anyone tell me the full form of Andy no not Paget's disease it is seen in Andy okay so Andy is nothing but aberration of normal development and involution. Okay, so serious discharge is seen in Andy. Okay, so this is all about the dis different types of discharges from the nipple that you will be asked greenish discharge, bloody discharge, and serious discharge. Moving on to our next condition. So, this is a patient who comes to you. He says that I have slight chest pain just below the area of the nipple. So, what should I do, doctor? And this is what you see in him. So, what exactly is he suffering from? And what is the pathology of this condition? Very good, Fez. So, this is nothing but Mondor's disease. Okay, this is Mondor's disease. In Mondor's disease, what do we have? We have cord-like veins. Can you see the vein over here? I'll just mark the outline of it. So, you have cord-like veins over here. Okay, so what is Mondor's disease if they ask you? Mondor's disease is nothing but thrombophlebitis of the superficial veins. Okay, so you have inflammation or thrombophlebitis of superficial veins. Now, the next question that is asked in the exam is what is the most common vein that is involved? I think one of you all have answered it over here. Yes, Fez has answered it over here. The most common vein that is involved in Mondor's disease is lateral thoracic vein. Okay. Now, next question that they'll ask you, what is the treatment of Mondor's disease? Anyone? Treatment bata of Mondor's disease. If there is superficial thrombophlebitis, there is an inflammation. How will you treat it? You will give anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so you will give anti-inflammatory drugs. And the second thing, to pro prevent further inflammation, you will make sure that you give the arm rest. Okay, so you will give arm rest. You will ask them not to do too many arm and chest movements. Okay, so gym mein jaake chest exercises nahi karne us din, at least for one week. You can do upper limb, uh, you can do lower body. Okay, so this is all about Mondor's disease asked in the exam. Now, this is a patient who is 55 year old female and she is coming to you with a large lump in the breast. Now, if you look clearly at the lump in the breast, you just look at it. It's extremely big. Okay. And it has a bosselated surface. Bosselated means shiny surface and you are able to see dilated veins on top of it. 
so these are specific features that you see in this case so it is a why have i given you the age it usually happens in females who are more than 40 years of age and what do you see over here you see a bosselated shiny surface with dilated veins on top and along with that you also have ulceration of the overlying skin so you have skin ulceration so what is she suffering from absolutely correct so she is suffering from phyloids disease phyloids tumor or phyloids disease what will your treatment be for phyloids anyone yes on histopathology if you see you can see the arrangement of leaf like structures over here that's why it's called as phyloid what will be your treatment treatment for phyloids tumor mastectomy what kind of mastectomy will you do you will do a simple mastectomy remember this okay you will do a simple mastectomy all right so this is all about phyloids tumor so till now we have completed phyloids tumor mondo's disease different types of um, secretions or discharge from the nipple and we have done breast abscess and mastitis all right so now let's go on to our next disease so our next disease basically the patient is a young female she is a 25 year old female and she is presenting to you with these symptoms clinical features she has bilateral breast lumps and during her menstrual cycle she is con complains of pain in the breast okay so that is called as cyclical nostalgia so what is she suffering from any idea She has bilateral breast lumps and cyclical nostalgia. No, this is not malignancy. Very good, fair Ibrahim. So this is nothing but Andy. Okay, what was Andy? We we discussed Andy before. What was the full form of Andy? aberration of normal development and involution Barabar? okay so basically it's nothing but a normal breast only but in some places there will be some small uh, cyst or there may be some kind of hyperplasia of the breast cells so it is not malignant in nature but this patient will generally have these symptoms in every menstrual cycle okay yes one of the differential diagnosis for this is fibrocystic breast disease now what exactly is present in the breast in andy so instead of normal breast tissue you may be having cysts or you may be having areas of fibrosis or you may be having areas of hyperplasia or you may be having areas of papillomatosis okay so any of these things can be present in the breast instead of the normal breast tissue so and these symptoms of the patient will be aggravated more due to hormonal changes during menstrual cycle so what will be your treatment for this i think someone mentioned before the treatment there was one specific thing that you all had mentioned something about some oil kisne bola tha starting me breast abscess mein someone had mentioned about one oil Yeah, they, yes very good so evening primrose oil okay so evening primrose oil can be given for application uh, local application in these cases and that will help in reducing the abnormal changes in the breast okay all right castor oil to baal mein lagate hain <laughs> evening primrose oil all right okay now moving on to the next picture so this is a spot diagnosis the first picture that i'm showing you over here identify and tell me the pathology in this case picture number one spot diagnosis very good so this looks like nothing but the skin on top of the breast looks like it is uh, and the peel of an orange correct it looks like it's a peel of an orange so this is also called as per the orange appearance Barabar? okay now tell me in per the orange appearance what exactly is happening what is the pathology
sham that oil has anti inflammatory properties so it helps in preventing all the uh, abnormal development of the breast parenchyma okay so sham is saying lymphatic involvement absolutely correct but to be more specific your cancer cells that are there they block the lymphatics of the breast okay so they cause lymphatic blockage and as a result of lymphatic blockage the entire area over here has dilated lymphatics and that's why you have this appearance of the breast okay so the breast is enlarged in size and there are dilated lymphatics due to which you see this appearance of the uh, orange peel and to be very very specific which lymphatics are blocked so these are just the subdermal lymphatics just the ones that are below the skin okay okay now can you guys identify for me what is number 2 picture number 2 over here and picture number 3 also you can identify actually if any of you all can understand what is there in picture number 3 so picture number 2 may basically what is the name of this instrument what is it used for and picture number 3 may what is the pathology that this patient is suffering from very good chole bature are you sure this is true cut biopsy needle is it not punch biopsy needle is it true cut or is it punch biopsy needle acche se dekh ke batao giri chetanya saying punch biopsy i am waiting for one more answer to confirm okay very good so this is nothing but a true cut biopsy needle okay your punch biopsy needle na basically it will look like a, sorry your punch biopsy needle na aisa hoga punch lena hai na usko of the tissue so it will be like this the end will be more circular okay but your true cut biopsy needle is more thin and sharper okay and it has these serrations or measurements over here so this is nothing but a true cut biopsy needle okay now true cut biopsy needle may you have to tell me you can take samples of which conditions so which tumor ka sample can you take in true cut biopsy needle tell me lymphangiosarcoma okay punch biopsy needle is used for taking samples of the skin okay your true cut biopsy needle is used for taking two samples one is that of ca breast and the second is of the prostate gland ठीक है ये याद रखो बिकॉज एग्जाम में दे कैन आई द गिव यू दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट टू आइडेंटिफाई और दे विल आस्क यू व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो यू शुड नो एग्जैक्टली कौन से ऑर्गन्स का बायोप्सी लेते हैं ओके वीडियो लैग हो रहा है सिर्फ आपका वीडियो लैग हो रहा है आई थिंक छोले भटूरे यू कैन रिफ्रेश द वीडियो ओके नाउ दिस पिक्चर नंबर थ्री हैज एनी वन आइडेंटिफाइड वॉट इज पिक्चर नंबर थ्री सो सी शी इज हैविंग अ लीजन इन द ब्रेस्ट एज वेल एज देर इज स्वेलिंग ऑफ द arm on that side so any idea what this could be lesion in the breast as well as swelling of the arm on that side paget's disease no post op complication okay this is called as cancer and curas cancer and curas okay so basically what is happening the lymphatics of that arm are getting blocked as a result of that you have enlargement of that arm also swelling of that arm also so that is why you have this uh, cancer on the same side you have swelling of the arm this is called as cancer in curas all right okay now one question that i wanted to ask you guys since we are talking so much about ca breast so what is the most common site of hematogenous spread in ca breast most common site of hematogenous spread in ca breast bata ye question do teen baar pucha gaya hai that's why any idea lungs vertebra okay थोरासिक वोटिब्रे लंबार वोटिब्रे एकदम सब अलग हिमाटोजेनस स्प्रेड पूछू मैं ओके सो एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट चोले बटूरे सो हिमाटोजेनस स्प्रेड स्प्रेड्स बाय बैट्सन प्लेक्सिस एंड इट स्प्रेड्स मोस्टली टू द लंबार वोटिब्रा ओके लंबार वोटिब्रे ओके मूविंग ऑन टू आवर नेक्स्ट पिक्चर ओवर हियर सो दिस पेशेंट इज कमिंग टू मी शी इज अ फोर्टी नाइन ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल 
and she says doctor while doing self breast examination i felt there is a mass or a lump in my breast along with that she says she also gets some bloody discharge on and off through the breast okay so she was saying that my male neighbor also used to have something similar and it turned out to be a cancer so you ask her to go ahead and do a mammogram so identify the disease that you can see over here <clears throat> okay very good so this mammogram mein what can you see over here you can see popcorn calcification correct this looks like a popcorn these lesions barabar so you can see popcorn calcification so what are we talking about over here which type of ca breast we are talking about fibroadenoma no malignant hai yaar dekho bloody discharge aa raha hai ye so this has to be malignant okay so popcorn type of calcification is also seen in ductal carcinoma in c2 okay ductal carcinoma in c2 okay so this is your ductal carcinoma in c2 and that is your diagnosis now what are the important things that you need to remember so you it will present as mass and bloody discharge wo to sabko pata hai that will be any kind of breast cancer but one important thing that you will see is that it can present in both males and females i told you now the male neighbor was having such symptoms so dcis is present in both males and in females all right okay then we'll move to the treatment of it once we do the staging so right now i'm not uh, discussing the treatment with you guys okay now this is another 49 year old female she different female she is coming to you she says i have only noticed a bloody discharge okay sorry she says she is only noticed a small mass okay there is no discharge that is present she says just while self breast examination i think there is a mass but you ask her about discharge she says no there is no discharge okay and this kind of tumor is exclusively present in females so when you do the mammography this is the picture that you see there is multifocal involvement there is multifocal involvement okay so what is this patient suffering from abhi bat so mass is present discharge is absent exclusively seen in females and multifocal involvement so here what is the diagnosis microcalcification yes but what type of malignancy is this okay so this is nothing but lcis okay this is nothing but lcis this is lobular carcinoma in situ all right samajh mein aaya everyone is confused itne confused kyu ho exclusively seen in females it has multifocal involvement this is nothing but lcis as simple as that and if it is seen in both males and females and it has very unifocal involvement then that is nothing but a dcis okay all right okay so now let's move on to staging of ca breast so you have done the types of ca breast you have done the complications also like per the orange cancer and curas now we need to do the staging of ca breast now i need one of you all to volunteer and start telling me the staging of ca breast so first i will do the tumor size staging t staging okay tnm mein t staging so here i have four स्टेजेस T1, T2, T3, T4 थ्री टी फोर कोई मुझे बता सकता है टी वन में क्या होता है ट्यूमर साइज टी टू में कितना टी थ्री में कितना टी फोर में कितना एंड आई विल गिव यू अस निमोनिक टू रिमेम्बर दिस ओके वेरी गुड टी वन में ट्यूमर साइज इज लेस देन टू सेंटीमीटर टी टू में T2 में 2 टू 5 सेंटीमीटर वेरी गुड T3 में T3 में ट्यूमर साइज विल बी मोर देन 5 सेंटीमीटर एंड T4 में यू हैव 
four different subgroups you have t4a t4b t4c and t4d okay so what are the subgroups that you have to remember i will tell you the mnemonic now okay so just remember that you breastfeed a child you breastfeed a child till he is 4 years old that's the only thing i want you guys to remember and now i know you all will say ma'am breastfeeding is only till 6 months of age but only for the purpose of this remembering ca breast tnm staging you just remember you breastfeed a child till he is 4 years of age okay so breastfeed se yaad rakhna hai सी ए ब्रेस्ट का स्टेजिंग है टिल फोर इयर्स ऑफ एज यू फीड द चाइल्ड सो टी वन टी टू थ्री टी थ्री एंड टी फोर ओके दैट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग नाउ यू हैव टू स्टार्ट रिमेम्बरिंग फ्रॉम टी टू तो टी टू का टू इधर लिख दो एंड देन यू जस्ट राइट टू टू फाइव सेंटीमीटर सो टी टू इज टू टू फाइव सेंटीमीटर टू एंड टू ओके सो टी वन विल ऑटोमेटिकली बी लेस देन टू सेंटीमीटर एंड टी थ्री विल ऑटोमेटिकली बी मोर देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर इतना हो गया ओके नाउ इफ बाय फोर इयर्स ऑफ एज द चाइल्ड इज नॉट वींड ऑफ देन यू हैव टू क्योर हिम ऑफ दिस डिजीज यू हैव टू क्योर हिम ऑफ दिस डिजीज ऑफ ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग दैट्स हाउ यू विल रिमेंबर द टी फोर ओके सो क्योर में फर्स्ट टी फोर ए मीन्स देर इज चेस्ट वॉल इन्वेजन ऑफ द ट्यूमर ओके सेकेंड इज देर इज अल्सरेशन ऑफ द स्किन U for ulceration of the skin. Okay, then R may R means it requires both. It requires both chest wall invasion as well as skin ulceration. Okay, and E so you can remember it is an inflammatory type, inflammatory type of breast carcinoma. Okay, so अभी तुमको याद रह जाएगा T N M staging, T staging at least of C A breast. ये easy हो गया. Again, I'll just tell you guys. So remember, a child has to be breastfed till he is four years old. सो फोर इयर्स ओल्ड का टी वन टी टू थ्री टी टी फोर लिख दो उसके बाद टी टू का टू इधर लिख दो सो टू टू फाइव सेंटीमीटर इज द साइज इन टी टू देन लेस देन टू सेंटीमीटर विल बी टी वन मोर देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर विल बी टी थ्री एंड टी फोर में वंस इफ द चाइल्ड इज नॉट क्योर इफ द चाइल्ड इज नॉट वींड बाय फोर इयर्स ऑफ एज यू हैव टू क्योर हिम ऑफ द डिजीज सो सी मीन्स देर इज अ ट्यूमर दैट इज मोर देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर प्लस इट हैज चेस्ट वॉल इन्वेशन यू मीन्स देर इज अल्सरेशन ऑफ द स्किन आर मीन्स इट रिक्वायर्स बोथ एंड ई इज इन्फ्लेमेटरी कार्सिनोमा ठीक है अभी ये याद रहेगा तुमको ओके नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेजिंग दैट इज द स्टेजिंग ऑफ लिम्फ नोट्स ठीक है and you have n3 now if we are talking about n1 there is only one group of lymph nodes involved in this because it is n1 correct n2 two will have two groups of lymph nodes involved in it 2a and 2b and n3 three will have three groups of lymph nodes involved in it so it will have n3a n3b and n3c theek hai abhi sirf ye photo dekho aur yaad rakho ये याद रखो आई डोंट आई डोंट नो इफ यू गाइज रिमेंबर दिस वायरल वीडियो अच्छा दिस वायरल वीडियो दैट हैड कम सम टाइम अगो ऑन यूट्यूब ये हम हैं ये हमारे फ्रेंड्स हैं और ये हमारी पारी हो रही है रिमेंबर रिमेंबर दैट पारी वाला वीडियो ओके सो जस्ट लाइक दैट नाउ यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दिस पिक्चर एंड यू हैव टू दैट विल हेल्प यू रिमेंबर द लिम्स नोट दैट आर इन्वॉल्व इन एंड स्टेजिंग ऑफ सी ओके तो ये ग्रुप में पहले देख लो ये फोटो में कौन से कौन से लिम्फ नोड्स हैं ऑन द लैटरल साइड यू कैन सी एक्सिलरी लिम्फ नोड्स ऑन द मीडियल साइड यू कैन सी यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द इंटरनल मेमोरी लिम्फ नोड्स ओके एंड ऊपर नीचे यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द सुपरा क्लेविकुलर लिम्फ नोड्स एंड द इंफ्रा क्लेविकुलर लिम्फ नोड्स ठीक है ओके और सो नाउ हाउ विल यू रिमेंबर यू रिमेंबर इन दिस वे ये हम है तो अपना एक हाथ ऊपर डालना है ये हम है ये हमारे लिम्फ नोड्स है और ये उनकी पारी हो रही है ओके सो व्हाट इज द मूवमेंट्स वन ऑन द लैटरल साइड वन ऑन द मीडियल साइड वन इज इंफ्रा एंड वन इज सुपरा सो दैट इज द फोर मूवमेंट्स यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ओके सो 
In these four moments, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you basically the four groups of lymph nodes that you need to remember. So first, your hand is moving laterally. So laterally, which lymph nodes are our here? You have the axillary lymph nodes. Okay. Then your hand is moving medially. So medially, what lymph nodes did we see? Medially, we saw the internal mammary group of lymph nodes. Barabar. So you have the internal mammary lymph nodes. Then you are moving down. Down means infra. Okay. So down, you are going infraclavicular lymph nodes. और ये हमारी पारी हो रही है, so then you are going up, that means supraclavicular lymph nodes, okay? तो इससे या, so from the, all this dancing also you will be able to identify all the lymph nodes that are involved. So now you also know the order in which the lymph nodes are involved. So now see, first you are going lateral, so N1 involves axillary lymph nodes, the lateral lymph nodes or axillary lymph nodes, okay? Now, N2 involves the medial group of lymph nodes. So, I already gave you the medial one over here. Those are the internal mammary lymph nodes. So, N2, B may ye internal mammary lymph nodes lick do. Now, if N2, B may internal mammary lick do, so N2, A is uh, khali, correct? So, you have to fill this. So, this is also axillary lymph nodes. Now, what is the difference between N1 and N2 ka axillary lymph nodes? N1 ka axillary lymph nodes are mobile, N2 ka axillary lymph nodes are fixed. It's more advanced, so it is fixed, okay? And then I told you the next movement was you were going down, infra, and then you were going supra, barabar. So in N3, the lymph nodes that you have is infraclavicular, and the last group of lymph nodes, ekdam niche lik do, you have is supraclavicular, okay? So 3B will be combination of 2, combination of 2A plus 2B, okay? So, that is how you guys can remember the entire staging of CA breast, okay? Now, nodal staging, I'll tell you once again and then we'll revise the whole thing. So, just look at this picture. First, your hand is going laterally towards the axillary lymph nodes. Ye hum hai, ye hamari lymph nodes hai aur ye unki Okay, so laterally you have the axillary lymph nodes, medially you have the internal mammary lymph nodes, then you have the infraclavicular and then you have the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Okay, so laterally you are going, so N1 will be a mobile axillary lymph nodes, N2 will be the medial lymph nodes, that is the internal mammary, that will be in N2B. Okay, and N2A will be axillary fixed lymph nodes and N3 may again you have the infraclavicular and the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Okay, done. So, abhi yaad reh jayega pura. So, T staging bhi yaad reh gaya. Child breastfeeds till he is 4 years of age. If he does not stop breastfeeding by 4 years of age, you have to cure him of the disease. Cure me, chest wall in invasion, ulceration requires both an inflammatory. And sizes may be yaad reh gaya. 2 se remember, 2 to 5 centimeter. And T1 will be less than 2 centimeter. T3 will be more than 5 centimeter. Okay. N staging bhi yaad reh gaya with the dance. And last staging that you need to remember is your M staging. M staging to both easy hai. M staging M0 means there is no metastasis. M1 means there is metastasis. Okay. Manali is asking N2 kya hoga. So Manali remember N1 has only one group of lymph nodes. N2, 2 hai to yaan pe two groups of lymph nodes hoga. 2A and 2B. And 3 hai to yaan pe three groups of lymph nodes hoga. 3A, 3B or 3C. Okay. So N2 will be N2B will be your medial group, internal mammary lymph nodes. N2A will be your fixed axillary lymph nodes. Okay? Agar kisi ko kuch nahi samaj mein aara hai, agar fir se kuch doubt hai, so you guys can definitely go through this part of the video again and you will definitely be able to remember the entire staging very easily for your exam. Okay? And last will be the M staging. M staging M0 means no metastasis. And M1 means meds is present. Simple. Okay, all right. Now moving on to uh, the next thing that is uh, treatment. Okay, so treatment may one very important thing they are asking nowadays is about hormonal therapy and immunotherapy. Okay, so here they ask if the patient, kabhi kabhi they give in the exam, ER, the patient has estrogen re receptor and progesterone receptor. Uh, positive. So, ERPR positive may what is the drug that you will give and if the patient is HER2 new positive, 
देन वॉट इज द ड्रग दैट यू विल गिव तो बताओ मुझे दे आर सिंगल लाइन आर क्वेश्चन ओके सो इफ द पेशेंट इज हर टू न्यू पॉजिटिव ओके हर टू न्यू पॉजिटिव यू विल गिव हर सेप्टेन easy to remember and then the only other hormonal therapy or immunotherapy that you have is tamoxifen so erpr positive hoga to tamoxifen denge or you can even give aromatase inhibitors theek hai and her to new positive mein you give herceptin all right okay so now next question that they will ask in the exam is uh, this has in fact been asked in my exam during my uh, neat pg is when do you say it is locally advanced breast cancer to isme bahut log confused ho jate hain ki locally advanced breast cancer kabhi hai aur uska treatment kya hai so any idea guys how to remember easily locally advanced breast cancer i will tell you two statements and you just need to remember those two statements and never get confused okay so in the t staging if you are having एनी ट्यूमर दैट इज टी फोर एंड अबाउ तो मतलब ये हमारा क्योर वाले तक अगर आ जाता है साइज मोर देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर एंड आइदर ऑफ दीज थिंग्स ओके क्योर वाले थिंग्स सो टी फोर एंड अबाउ और एन टू एंड अबाउ ओके सो एन टू इज ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व टी फोर इज ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व ओके सो आफ्टर मोबाइल एक्सलरी लिफ्ट नोट एनी थिंग इफ देर इज देर इन्वॉल्वमेंट देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज लोकली एडवांस ब्रेस्ट कैंसर ओके सो जस्ट रिमेंबर दीज टू स्टेटमेंट्स T4 and above and N2 and above. This will classify as locally advanced breast cancer. And what will your treatment be for locally advanced breast cancer? Nothing but neoadjuvant chemotherapy needs to be given for this. अभी मुझे कोई बताएगा neoadjuvant chemotherapy का मतलब क्या है? What is the meaning of neoadjuvant chemotherapy? नियो एडजुवन कीमोथेरेपी मीन्स बिफोर सर्जरी यू गिव कीमो ओके वॉट विल दैट कीमो डू इट विल रिड्यूस द साइज एंड द एग्रेशन ऑफ द ट्यूमर एंड देन यू टेक द पेशेंट अप फॉर सी सर्जरी सो एनी काइंड ऑफ कीमोथेरेपी दैट यू आर गिविंग बिफोर द सर्जरी दैट इज कॉल्ड एज नियो एडजुवन कीमोथेरेपी विच हेल्प इन रिड्यूसिंग द साइज एंड एग्रेशन ऑफ द ट्यूमर ओके All right, so this is about locally advanced breast cancer. Now, two surgical options that you see in case of CA breast. One is BCT and one is MRM. So, ye this is the next question that they ask in breast conservative therapy. What all is removed in modified radical mastectomy? What all is in, removed? Basically, na most of the times they will give you only BCT and MRM only. Uh, in fact, even practically they do only BCT and MRM only. So they don't really do anything else. Uh, of course, near driven chemotherapy or RT they they he hai. But surgically, if you see, most of the times there is BCT and MRM. They'll hardly ever do a simple mastectomy or a wide excision. Yeah, you all are lagging behind me a little bit. That's why your answers are coming. little after i have already asked the question okay to ye batao bct mein kya kya nikalte hain so if there is a just imagine this is the breast okay and there is a lump in the breast so what they will do is they will open up they'll take an incision from here and remove the lump so they will do a lumpectomy lump will be removed plus around the lump 1 cm wide local excision will be done in bct okay so they are not removing the entire breast just that lump is being removed and a margin of 1 cm around the lump okay then they will do a sentinel lymph node biopsy okay with the sentinel lymph node biopsy they will basically check whether the spread of the tumor has taken place or no so intra op they will send it to the lab uh to and they will check whether there is malignancy or no in the or spread or no in the lymph node so that is called as sentinel lymph node biopsy okay and post operatively they will give radiotherapy to the patient 
okay so this is uh, everything that is involved in breast conservative therapy now when there is an aggressive tumor or if the tumor has already spread to the lymph nodes then we will go for modified radical mastectomy okay so modified radical mastectomy this is the breast you will remove the entire breast okay so you are going to remove the entire breast the whole thing plus you will remove the skin that is on top of the breast and then how will you close it so suppose this is the breast you remove the whole thing and the skin on top of it yahan ka jo margin hai aur yahan ka jo margin hai that you will approximate it and suture it okay so that is how you remove the entire breast in modified radical mastectomy and it has already spread to the lymph nodes also so you will do an entire axillary lymph node dissection so in the axilla you will also remove all the lymph nodes okay so this is the difference between bct and mrm that you need to remember here you are only removing the lump you are not removing the entire breast and you are just sampling the lymph nodes here you are removing the breast you are removing the skin you are removing all the lymph nodes okay all right now moving on to our next question since we are talking about sentinel lymph node biopsy can you guys tell me in which three cancers do we do sentinel lymph node biopsy because this has previously come in your exam as well as they will ask you in all of these cancers sentinel lymph node biopsy is done except and that will be the fourth option so without giving all options i want you to tell me sentinel lymph node biopsy is done in which case give me three cancers in which we do sentinel lymph node biopsy obviously breast is one ye maine bct se hi tumko bata diya aur do kaun se cancer hai penile and vulval cancer no that is not correct afsha ब्रेस्ट कैंसर तो मैंने बोल दिया ऑलरेडी दैट वी सॉ इन बी सी टी बताओ और दो कौन से है ओके सो प्रोस्टेट कैंसर दैट इज वन या प्रोस्टेट वेरी गुड अफशा एंड स्किन का एक है स्किन कौन सा कैंसर लेकिन प्रमोद कुमार very good the theory is so melanoma okay so these are the three cancers in which we will do a sentinel lymph node biopsy all right and the last thing about ca breast is what is the treatment of ca breast okay so i'm going to write it here only because there's no space so treatment of ca breast now you all have to help me out in this okay so if there is early breast cancer if metastasis has not taken place if there is early breast cancer then the treatment will be bct or mrm that is the surgical treatment okay after the surgery you will give chemotherapy plus radiotherapy to the patient after the surgery okay and if there is erpr positive if erpr positive then you will also give the patient hormonal therapy okay then next is if you have locally advanced breast cancer locally advanced breast cancer i have already told you what is labc t2 or above and sorry t4 or above or n2 or above yeah the t4 n2 or above barabar okay so locally advanced breast cancer mein same thing you have to do as early breast cancer only treatment will be there but uske pehle you have to give neoadjuvant chemotherapy before the surgery that new adjuvant chemotherapy has to be added okay and the rest is the same as treatment of early breast cancer you will do surgery then you will do chemo and radio all right then next is if the tumor is metastatic so if you have m1 in that case there is no point of doing new adjuvant chemotherapy and uh, so much so what you do in that case is you just do a palliative mastectomy palliative mastectomy remove the tum the breast because because of the mass of the tumor also the patient will feel very heavy in the chest okay so you do a palliative mastectomy and you can do hormonal therapy 
depending on whether the ERPR status uh, and the HER2 new status. Okay, so this is simply the treatment of CA breast. So, if kidder be M1 hua, to directly you know that the answer goes over here. Okay, other than M1, if you still have M0, just see whether it is T4 or above, N2 or above. If it is that, then it is LABC. So, just add new adjuvant chemotherapy plus whatever I treat, treatment I told you for early breast cancer. If it is less than T4, it is T1, T2 or T3 and N1, then you will go for treatment, surgery plus chemo plus radio. Okay. Staphylococcus, we already discussed about tamoxifen and everything. Hormone, if ERPR is positive. Okay. Alright, so in breast, what have we seen today? We have seen in breast, we have, okay, so Jobi Mene Likata sub chala gaya, but in fact, we have done the entire CA breast, we have done the staging of CA breast, we have done uh, your uh, mastitis, we have done further orange appearance, cancer and curas, we have done LCIS, DCIS. Uh, then we have done phyloids tumor, Mondor's disease, different types of nipple discharge and what do they stand for and also mastitis and breast abscess. Okay, so breast ka pura chapter ho gaya, abhi next thing that we need to move on to is salivary glands for today. Okay, so let's go on to uh, oral cavity and salivary glands a little bit. So I just want you guys to identify these three pictures and tell me out of these, these are all pre-malignant lesions. So just identify for me what is 1, what is 2 and what is 3. These are all pre-malignant lesions of the oral cavity. Thank you Muazzam Ahmed. Okay, so Chole Bature is saying, yeah. So the first lesion that you can see over here clearly is leukoplakia. Okay, you can see it over here. There is a whitish irregular margin lesion that is present. The, on two, you can see there is a reddish irregular margin lesion that is present on the tongue. So that is erythroplakia. That is erythroplakia. Okay, and then can you see over here, if you see very closely, can you see this is the reddish tissue and then you are seeing this whitish tissue over here. Dik rai? Achche se, if I show you, you can see. So, there are basically islands of white tissue over here. So, this is called as nothing but speckled leukoplakia. This is called as speckled leukoplakia. Okay, chote chote specks of whitish pre-malignant lesion on the oral cavity. Now tell me out of 1, 2 and 3 which is which has the highest potential of malignancy. Which has the highest potential of malignancy out of 1, 2 and 3? Leukoplakia, are you sure? Everyone is wrong. Jisne bhi answer diya hai, wo sab wrong hai. Okay, so speckled leukoplakia has the highest potential of malignancy. Able to see me? Okay, alright. Okay, so lymph nodes may say if you have to take any one sample, you can simply do a fine needle aspiration cytology. Okay, agar primary tissue say diagnose karna hai, if you have to diagnose whether it is squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma, so you and, and it is CA of the maxilla or mandible, so you will take a tissue biopsy, correct? So for tissue diagnosis, you will do a biopsy or a wide local excision. ठीक है, radiological investigation of choice अगर तुमको बोले, so always answer it as MRI, MRI will tell you about the bone as well as the soft tissue involvement in case of the oral cavity cancer, so MRI will be the radiological investigation of choice and last they will tell you METs के बारे में बताओ, so they will, if they tell you, tell me about the METs of the 
uh, spread of this tumor then you will do a pet ct to see the mets okay so these are all our diagnostic modality for oral cavity cancers okay now another question that they ask in oral cavity cancer is one about the staging okay so staging of oral cavity cancers also i have taken it as a mnemonic uh, on youtube so what you can do is i am not teaching it over here neither this class will get unnecessarily prolonged uh, did you take any class on iv and inhalational anesthetic always get confused which will be used in neurocardio surgery okay uh, i am going to be starting on the anesthesia series from today uh, it is going to be on the plus platform at 4 to 6 pm every day okay so for tnm staging of oral cavity lesions just go on youtube and type it and is pe likh do mnemonic theek hai aur mnemonic ke aage likh do mera naam janvi so you will be able to find it just like ca breast ka mnemonic i taught you all na T uh, oral cavity lesion ka also mnemonic i have taken okay all right now the next thing that they will ask you in the exam about oral cavity lesions is this this question has been asked multiple times before and people don't read and go still don't read and go okay so what is the difference between radical neck dissection modified radical neck dissection and selective neck dis dissection तो रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन में क्या क्या निकालोगे मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन में क्या क्या निकालोगे सिलेक्टिव नेक डिसेक्शन में क्या क्या निकालोगे बताओ ठीक है मैं बताऊ ओके सो इन रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन एंड इन मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन यू विल रिमूव लिम्फ नोड्स फ्रॉम वन टू फाइव लेवल्स ओके लिम्फ नोड्स फ्रॉम वन टू फाइव लेवल्स देन इन रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन यू विल आल्सो रिमूव द सब मैंडेबुलर ग्लैंड ठीक है इसमें भी यू विल रिमूव द सब मैंडेबुलर ग्लैंड तो ये दोनों में सिंपल है सेम है ठीक है एंड देन यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सर्जिकल साइट इन्फेक्शन सर्जिकल साइट इन्फेक्शन सो रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन इफ यू आर मूविंग एवरीथिंग यू कैन कॉज अ सर्जिकल साइट इन्फेक्शन ये याद रखो ओके सर्जिकल साइट इन्फेक्शन से यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एस फॉर स्टर्नोक्लीडो मैस्ट्रॉइड एस फॉर स्पाइनल एक्सेसरी न एंड आई फॉर आई जे ठीक है सो इन रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन यू आर रिमूविंग so all of this so surgical site infection can happen in modified radical neck dissection you are not removing all of this okay all this is preserved this is preserved so that is why it is called as modified radical neck dissection okay and last you have selective neck dissection so if you do anything less than modified radical neck dissection if you remove less levels of lymph nodes or if you don't remove the submandibular gland then this will become a selective neck dissection theek hai to sabse zyada cheez hai you remove in radical neck dissection uske baad you remove in modified radical neck dissection uske baad in selective neck dissection clear abhi yaad rahega exam ke liye kya kya nikalta hai theek hai ओके चलो नाउ गोइंग ऑन टू आर फेवरेट क्वेश्चन सो दिस पेशेंट कम्स टू मी विद अ फ्लक्चुएंट स्वेलिंग इन द बेस ऑफ द टंग ट्रांस इल्यूमिनेशन टेस्ट इज पॉजिटिव देन व्हाट इज द आइडेंटिफाई दिस एंड टेल मी व्हाट इज द ट्रीटमेंट very good so this is nothing but a ranula okay it is a extra vesication cyst of which glands extra vesication cyst of which glands are involved in this sublingual glands very good ट्रांसिलोग्राफी ओके नाउ जस्ट एल मी इन प्लजिंग रेन्यूला 
when we talk about plunging ranula which muscle through which muscle does the ranula go to form a plunging ranula कौन से मसल से जाता है रैनुला टू मे फॉर्म अ प्लंजिंग रैनुला नहीं पता माइलो हाइड माइलो हाइड मसल ठीक है ओके नाउ लिटिल बिट अबाउट ओरल सॉरी सलाइवरी ग्लैंड ट्यूमर्स के बारे में एक चीज पूछना था मुझे तुम लोग को वॉट इज द ओवरऑल मोस्ट कॉमन salivary gland tumor what is the most common benign salivary gland tumor what is the most common malignant salivary gland tumor and early perineural invasion is seen in which case extravasation Okay, and all right. so tell me all of these single one-liner questions that comes about salivary gland tumors. Most common overall is pleomorphic adenoma. Barabar. Most common benign is again pleomorphic adenoma. Barabar. Most common malignant. Okay, very good. Most of you all have written over here. Most common malignant is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. And early perineural invasion is seen with early perineural invasion is seen with adenoid cystic carcinoma. Okay, so all these are one-liners that they will ask you about. uh oral uh, salivary gland tumors in the exam okay got it now identify this tumor that you can see salivary gland tumor anyone ye bahut hi easy hai abhi tum log hi mujhe iske bare mein sab kuch bataoge adenoid cystic photo dekho yahan pe tumko tumor dikh raha hai and the ear is getting pushed up a little bit yes very good it is in the area of the parotid parotid ke bare mein kuch bhi aayega na to zyada sochna mat directly pyomorphic adenoma mark kar dena because that is the most common tumor so they will ask you about the most common only in the exam okay so this is nothing but pleomorphic adenoma okay awesome now Let's move on to our next topic. So that is the parathyroid. This is the last topic for today. Okay, we'll just finish it in ten fifteen minutes. Okay. So upper parathyroid glands develop from pharyngeal pouch number one, two, three, or four. Sham. See, the NB keeps changing the patterns all the time. even if they introduce clinical questions in the exam they cannot really make the entire exam full of clinical questions there has to be some one liners so that you all have enough time to attempt all the questions so one liners to honge hi uske liye tumko most common to karne padenge hi aur uh, clinical questions bhi aayenge so it will be a equally distributed paper it will never be full of one liners or full of uh, clinical questions okay very good very good okay so we have four parathyroid glands so the upper two parathyroid glands develop from the fourth pharyngeal pouch what about the lower two where do they develop from lower two develop from where Yes, the lower two absolutely correct. Develop from the third pharyngeal pouch. Okay, so upper wala four or niche wala 
थ्री से डेवलप होते हैं ओके नाउ यू हैव टू टेल मी आउट ऑफ अपर टू एंड लोअर टू विच आर द मोर बिगर ग्लैंड विच आर द लार्जर ग्लैंड विच वन इज लार्जर अपर ग्लैंड लार्जर और लोअर ग्लैंड लार्जर ओके वेरी गुड सो लोअर ग्लैंड आर लार्जर ग्लैंड ओके विच अपर टू और लोअर टू विच वन इज मोर प्रोन टू एडिनोमा एडिनोमा ऑफ द पैराथेरॉइड ग्लैंड इज कॉमन इन विच वन अपर पैराथेरॉइड और लोअर पैराथेरॉइड लोअर पैराथेरॉइड ओके दीज आर मोर प्रोन टू एडिनोमा एंड विच वन इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ द रेकरेंट लाइनजल नॉर्म आई वॉज जस्ट रीडिंग माई लार्जर ऑन द स्क्रीन एंड इट लुक्स लाइक लेयर हैंड राइटिंग का कुछ करना पड़ेगा इफ समन नोज हाउ एन एडल्ट कैन इम्प्रूव दियर हैंड राइटिंग प्लीज डू लेट मी नो If there if there are any books or courses that can be taken for handwriting improvement, I'm desperately looking for it. Okay, yeah. So your lower parathyroids that are there, they are in front of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, and your upper parathyroids that are there, they are behind the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, itna differences between upper and lower parathyroids aana chahiye tumko exam ke liye. okay now the next thing that they will ask you is uh, what is the secretion of the parathyroid gland so everyone knows about it the the this this is the parathyroid gland the parathyroid gland contains cells which are called as chief cells okay and what do the chief cells produce they produce nothing but parathormone and what does parathormone do it is responsible for calcium metabolism okay so now tell me which of these is a false statement about parathormone increases absorption of the calcium from gut mobilizes calcium from the bone increases calcium reabsorption from renal tubules or half life of parathormone is 14 minutes persian calligraphy teachers Muazzam is saying D, and Aruna Afshar is saying B. Okay, so can anyone tell me what is what does parathormone do basically? It increases the blood calcium levels, correct? So to increase the blood calcium levels, it has to absorb calcium from everywhere. So it will absorb it from the gut, it will reabsorb it from the renal tubules, and what is the third thing? It will also mobilize it from the bone into the blood vessel. Okay. so it has to increase the serum calcium levels so it will mobilize the calcium from the bone it will not deposit it on the bone it will take it from the bone and bring it to the blood okay so all these three are correct half life of parathormone is not 14 minutes it is 4 minutes okay half life of parathormone is 4 minutes now a few things that you should know about parathormone these three options so you know one more thing that you need to know is parathormone secretion like most of the hormones in the body depend on the pituitary gland for its secretion okay this is not dependent on pituitary gland in fact the negative feedback mechanism comes from the serum calcium levels okay so it is not dependent on pituitary gland and the next thing that you need to know about parathormone is what does it do okay so it converts the vitamin d into 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol and where is this done this is done in the kidney this is the active form of vitamin d okay all right so this is all that you need to know about parathyroid a uh, parathormone okay now the next thing that we have to discuss is what is the difference between so let's just do the two main things that is hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism okay अभी हाइपो पैराथेरोडिज्म में ज्यादा कुछ नहीं है यू जस्ट नीड टू नो अबाउट टेटनी दे डोंट रियली आस्क इट इन द एग्जाम सो व्हाट वी नीड टू फोकस अपॉन इज 
hyper parathyroidism so you have to tell me when do you have primary when do you have secondary and when do you have tertiary para hyper parathyroidism give me examples of all of them बताओ वेन डू यू गेट प्राइमरी वेन डू यू गेट सेकेंडरी वेन डू यू गेट टर्शरी हाइपर पैराथरस और सो स्टेफाइलो कॉकस एकदम बराबर बोला है ओके सो प्राइमरी हाइपर पैराथायरोइडिज्म इज सीन व्हेन एवर यू हैव अ पैराथायरोइड एडेनोमा ओके सो यू हैव अ पैराथायरोइड एडेनोमा द चीफ सेल्स इंक्रीज एंड दे प्रोड्यूस मोर पैराथार्मोन सो यू विल हैव मोर कैल्शियम फ्रॉम द मोर कैल्शियम अब्सॉर्ब फ्रॉम द गट फ्रॉम द किडनी एंड मोबिलाइज फ्रॉम द बोन ओके सो पैराथायरोइड एडेनोमा इंक्रीज पीटीएच लेवल्स इंक्रीज कैल्शियम लेवल्स इन द ब्लड secondary hyperparathyroidism it has to be secondary to something very good rita so rakesh in fmg december you saw all my medicine anesthesia and surgery video and it helped you a lot and you got 200 and one very good i'm very happy about it rakesh and if uh, i have helped you then you should also help me back by recommending your fmg um, ongoing exam going students to come and watch these videos now okay all right so secondary hyperparathyroidism is seen secondary to something so it is secondary to chronic renal failure and it may be secondary to vitamin d deficiency so vitamin d deficiency may there is one condition that you see rickets theek hai so it is secondary to to both these conditions ab isme kya hota hai whenever you have chronic renal failure what will happen in that case you will have because of the renal failure you will have reduced conversion of vitamin d to the active form that is 125 dihydroxycholic aciferol so this will not happen if this does not happen you will have reduced absorption of calcium from everywhere from the git from the kidneys reduced mobilization okay so the only way you can get the calcium into the serum is from the bone into the blood okay so how do you do that automatically your parathyroids that are there they will become hyperplastic okay and they will start producing more and more parathormone they increase the parathormone secretion so if they increase the parathormone secretion more and more calcium is picked up from the bone and it is put into the blood ओके सो सिंस जी में रीअब्जॉर्प्शन नहीं हो रहा किडनी में सॉरी जी में अब्जॉर्प्शन नहीं हो रहा किडनी में रीअब्जॉर्प्शन नहीं हो रहा द ओनली वे इट कैन गेट इट इज फ्रॉम द बोन ओके नाउ वाइटामिन डी डेफिशिएंसी में आल्सो सेम थिंग यू डोंट हैव द प्रीकसर ओनली यू डोंट हैव दिस वाइटामिन डी ओनली सो एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस यू आर हैविंग हाइपो एंड टू मेक अप फॉर दिस हाइपो यू विल हैव पैराथरॉइड हाइपर कॉजिंग इंक्रीज पैराथॉर्मोन सेक्रेशन कॉजिंग Dip, uh, deposition of calcium from bone into blood okay and last you have tertiary hyperparathyroidism so tertiary hyperparathyroidism is seen after renal transplant so after renal transplant what happens autonomically without any reason there will be parathyroid hyperplasia okay because there is a new kidney that is coming in so all the hormonal functions of the kidney are haywire so what happens is the parathyroid starts feeling ki nahi nahi kuch to galat hone wala hai i am going to have hypocalcemia so to prevent that the parathyroid has reactive hyperplasia okay after renal transplantation so that is when you see tertiary hyperparathyroidism ye yaad rahega abhi primary secondary tertiary primary is happening in the gland itself secondary is due to some problem in the kidney and tertiary is after transplant all right okay now in hyperparathyroidism what are the clinical features that the patient presents with batao your favorite clinical features
तीन चार नाम है उसके एकदम अच्छे से याद रहता है एग्जाम में ओके सो देर इज बोन्स यस देर इज स्टोन्स देर इज ग्रोन्स abdominal groans and psychiatric moans barabar bones stones groans and psychiatric moans okay now what do you get in the bones can anyone tell me what do you get in the bones okay i told you you are removing the calcium from the bones if this is your bone scooby doo wala okay you are removing the calcium from the bone and you are bringing it into the blood barabar so what happens in this case who removes the calcium from the bones who breaks down the bones there are cells called as osteoclasts which do that okay so when they cause erosion of the bone they lead to formation of these small small fibrotic cysts because of the decalcification of the bone you have formation of fibrotic cysts so this condition is also called as osteitis fibrosa cystica okay so in hyperparathyroidism you will see osteitic osteitis fibrosa cystica okay and where exactly are they seen they are seen mostly in the phalanges in the fingers as well as in the clavicle all right okay now you okay, you can also see it in the jaw in the skull in all of those also you can see osteitis fibrosa cystica okay now the second thing that you see is the stones so stones is because of hypercalcemia you have high calcium levels because you have high parathormone levels so because of hypercalcemia you will have different types of stones forming now what are the common uh, stones that you see in the kidney you see calcium oxalate monohydrate and calcium oxalate dihydrate okay so if you have excessive calcium the calcium will precipitate in the kidney as calcium stones okay and then why do you get abdominal groans any idea what is the reason behind the abdominal groans okay so kya hota hai na if you have excessive calcium levels this calcium will act on your gastrin releasing cells your hormonal cells that are there in the stomach in the antrum and it will cause excessive gastrin release okay excessive gastrin release will cause increased hydrochloric acid levels in the stomach and this will lead to more of peptic ulcer formation okay so because of increased peptic ulceration you have abdominal groans okay yeah and why do you get psychiatric moans anyone any idea for psychiatric moans okay there is no reason for the psychiatric moans but generally these patients will have a lot of mood swings they will have depression anxiety disorder so that is why they have psychiatric moans all right so this is the reason you should also know the reason of all of this bone stones groans sirf naam yaad rakh ke tumhara kaam nahi ho jayega theek hai so what have we seen in hyperparathyroidism what what are the types primary secondary tertiary what are the clinical features now tell me how will you investigate for hyperparathyroidism and how will you treat ओके सो इन्वेस्टिगेशन में क्या क्या करोगे बताओ दो तीन ब्लड टेस्ट बताओ दो तीन बोन टेस्ट बताओ एनीथिंग यू विल सी इन द एक्सरे वेरी गुड स्टेफाइलो कॉकस सो किधर का एक्सरे लोगे तुम और क्या दिखाई देगा तुमको सो वेयर ऑल ऑस्टियाइटिस फाइब्रोसा सिस्टिका इज प्रेजेंट उधर सबका तुमको एक्सरे लेना है ठीक है सो एक्सरे ऑफ द स्कल एक्सरे ऑफ द स्कल विल शो यू वॉट अपियरेंस देर इज अ वेरी क्लासिकल अपियरेंस एट यू सी एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज सॉल्ट एंड पेपर अपियरेंस ओके नेक्स्ट यू विल हैव एक्सरे ऑफ द फैलेंजेस सो एक्सरे ऑफ द फैलेंजेस ऑफ द फिंगर्स विल शो यू नथिंग बट योर सब पेरियोसियल रिजॉर्प्शन From the bone. Okay, I told you now phalanges में सबसे ज्यादा clavicle में सबसे ज्यादा osteoarthritis fibrosa cystic का होता है, so you will see it over there. Okay, then in the spine, in the spine when you do, you will see rugged jersey spine. What is rugged jersey spine? Rugged jersey means जो jail में पहनते हैं ना alternate black and white 
स्ट्राइप्स वाला जर्सी वैसे यू विल सी ऑल्टरनेट वाइट वेयर द बोन इज डिपॉजिटेड एंड ब्लैक फ्रॉम वेयर द सब पेरियोस्टल रिजॉर्बन एज टेकन प्लेस ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री अपियरेंसेज इसमें से स्कल एंड स्पाइन का इंपॉर्टेंट है ओके ओके आफ्टर एक्स रे विल यू डू एनी अदर इन्वेस्टिगेशन very good pramod kumar so you will check the serum calcium levels and if your serum calcium levels are more than 10 mg percent okay normal is your 7.5 or 8 to 10 if it is more than 10 mg percent that means you know that this is hyperparathyroidism okay anything else you will check if you are checking the serum calcium level serum mein aur kuch bhi dekhoge serum phosphorus levels barabar ओके नाउ रिमेंबर कैल्शियम एंड फॉस्फोरस आर फॉस्फेट आर ऑलवेज इन द ऑपोजिट डिरेक्शन ओके सो इन इफ योर कैल्शियम इज इंक्रीजिंग योर फॉस्फेट लेवल्स विल डिक्रीज और राइट देन नेक्स्ट इज योर सीरम पैराथॉर्मोन लेवल्स बट रिमेंबर पैराथॉर्मोन का हाफ लाइफ इज जस्ट फोर मिनट्स सो एज सुन एज यू टेक द सैंपल यू हैव टू गिव इट फॉर प्रोसेसिंग ओके so you can check your serum parathormone levels also anything else because the bone is breaking down so much your serum alkaline phosphatase levels will be increased this is always seen whenever there is breakdown of the bone okay all right what will be the treatment last part treatment If it is primary, secondary, or tertiary hyperparathyroidism, patient is having lot of symptoms, and you are not able to control the calcium metabolism. How will you treat it? Parathyroidectomy, very good. Okay, now tell me. Suppose these are my four glands, one, two, and this one has become an adenoma. Will I remove all the four glands, or will I remove only the one which has the adenoma? ओके आई विल रिमूव ओनली द वन विच एज एडिनोमा ओके सपोज आई हैव टू रिमूव ऑल द फोर ग्लैंड सपोज देर इज एडिनोमा इन ऑल फोर ग्लैंड और पैराथेरॉइड हाइपर प्लेसिया दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन ऑल फोर ग्लैंड नाउ आई हैव टू डू अ टोटल पैराथेरॉडेक्टमी बट दिस पेशेंट कैन हैव हाइपो कैल्सीमिया बिकॉज ऑफ दैट बराबर सो आई विल री इम्प्लांट सम ऑफ माई पैराथेरॉइड ग्लैंड इन दैट केस सो वॉट इज द साइट ऑफ री इम्प्लांटेशन and how much of the gland will i reimplant will i implant the entire gland all four glands or will i implant three glands two glands one gland when ha ah. manali you are correct but which muscle may you reimplant forearm may reimplant karte hai barabar so you can reimplant in the forearm and which muscle in the brachioradialis muscle okay or the other thing is you can reimplant in the neck and neck may where do you reimplant in the sternocleidomastoid muscle okay so this comes in the exam so i'm marking it as a question in which muscle do you reimplant the parathyroids okay and the next thing is how much will you reimplant quantity that you will reimplant so 1/3 of a gland 1/3 of a gland or 100 grams of a gland okay sorry 100 grams no 100 mg all right so this is your reimplantation psychiatric overtones or it can be psychiatric moans also groans is because of the abdominal groans psychiatric overtones or psychiatric moans all right okay now suppose you it turns out to be a cancerous growth okay so if it is ca of the parathyroids then obviously you will remove all the parathyroid but along with it you will also remove a part of the thyroid okay so you will also do hemithyroidectomy on that side on the side where you find the ca of the gland okay sab charo gland mein to cancer nahi hoga it will be mostly in one gland so that side ka you will also do a additional hemithyroidectomy and you can also give radiotherapy post op okay so that is all that you need to know about hyperparathyroidism 
प्लीज रेंट मी योर ब्रेन टिल माई एग्जाम फाइन आई एल रेंट इट आउट एंड देन वॉट विल हुज ब्रेन विल आई यूज टिल देन बिकॉज आई ऑल्सो हैव टू गो टू वर्क एंड आई ऑल्सो हैव टू कंटिन्यू टेकिंग क्लासेस हाउ विल आई टेक क्लासेस विदाउट अ ब्रेन ओके सो टुमोरोज टॉपिक विल बी यूरो ओके टुमोरोज टॉपिक विल बी यूरोलॉजी इन सर्जरी सो वील डू दैट सो टूडे वॉट ऑल हैव वी डन वी डन द एंटायर ब्रेस्ट पैराथेरॉइड का आई हैव कवर्ड वॉट एवर कम्स फॉर द एग्जाम नथिंग एल्स विल कम फॉर द एग्जाम दिल मोस्टली आस्क अबाउट द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी टर्शरी हाइपर पैराथेरॉडिज्म एंड ऑल्सो द Uh, X-ray features of hyperparathyroidism. Okay, uh, no, I'm not a surgeon. I'm an anesthetist, so I know most of everything about surgery because we sit and we watch surgeons. Okay, all right. So that is all about uh, parathyroids, breast, and uh, oral cavity as well as salivary glands. I have touched up upon the things that we missed in the last class. Okay, so all done for today, and I shall see you guys tomorrow same time. uh 11 o'clock to 12:30 that's the usual time that we have and day after tomorrow also 11 o'clock to 12:30 so tomorrow we'll be doing urology uh, and uh, then day after tomorrow i'll tell you what topic we'll do and then uh, to from today onwards 4 to 6 we have uh, evening anesthesia revision so for the next 6 days from 19 to 24 we'll have evening anesthesia revision all right Okay so thank you so much for joining me today guys and I shall see you on at 4 o'clock if you'll come for the plus classes and if you're going to come for the youtube classes then tomorrow at 11 o'clock okay today no more live classes in the evening except the one that is on the plus class so if you want to join the plus course you can come for it okay bye bye and guys don't forget to leave a thumbs up at the end of the class thank you yes plus on the unacademy app only